Welcome back to the second part of our chat about Spanko Spanko relationships and whether being in a relationship with another spanking fetishist is worth it. We've got more questions that were submitted by friends from my Discord community and from people who watch this channel, and I'm really excited to keep chatting. So let's get into it. So next we've got, does our dynamic change when uh, we're in front of other people? Here in the notes, you didn't give me something, so I wrote whatever he wants to say. Yeah, I mean, look, of course I tone it down a bit, like. A lot. And I tone it down a lot in front of other people, of course, because especially if they, especially if they're people that I haven't talked to about it, yeah. or like that I don't know if we've explained it to or anything, I don't want them getting uncomfortable or getting the wrong impression, or like, you know, definitely as a guy, if I'm being all dommy, like, you know, there's definitely, if, if people don't know about our dynamic, there's definitely a risk they might just think I'm an asshole. So I definitely tone it down a lot um, with people. And I think rightly so. I think so too. Um, I, I think it would be, you know, kind of like if two vanilla people were doing a slobbery makeout session in front of you, it's public displays of affection are, you know, Proceed with caution, I guess, and, and with context. Um, so we definitely tone it down when we're in front of other people. I do still call him daddy um, in front of other people, which was a little bit of an awkward transition, I have to admit. But I mean, most of our friends know what's what. They don't really care. Like I've said in a previous video, if vanilla people are allowed to call their partners baby in public, a, a baby is a literal child. <laughs> like, why? Like, that's a weird thing to call your partner to. Honey is a food product. Like, these are all weird words. So I do call him daddy still in public. Uh, but a nice, uh, a nice perk of dating someone named Dan is if daddy ever accidentally slips out in, um, mixed company or in front of the wrong person, I do have the option to say, what? I was just saying Danny. Uh, like I said in a previous video, do not underestimate the power of plausible deniability. So next on the list we have, is play easier with another Spanko or is there still a lot of communication required? I feel like to this question, I am supposed to say communication is incredibly important and indispensable and you can't skip having those important conversations and negotiations even if you're with or playing with another spanking fetishist. That is definitely true and I have said it. So now that I have said it, I can say, yeah, no, it's, it's way easier with, it, with you. Um, and we don't need to talk at all anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll say, I'll, I'll say the truth and you can edit it out later. Um, it's, a, it's, it's such a joy being in, a, what's so lovely about being in a really long dynamic is after years and years, you've obviously talked about absolutely everything. You know exactly what is okay, what isn't okay. Like, and like, so you never, so you don't have to negotiate anymore. And that is so fun. Like it is so fun that I can just dive into play if I think it's a good moment without having to like talk about it or it could be really spontaneous. It could, it's so fun. And like, that's one of the perks of long relationships. And I think, yeah, I don't know. I think, I hope the internet can handle that. Next we have, what does Spanko non-monogamy look like for us in our relationship? Um, I think, you know, this is, uh, Controversial, different people have different opinions, but we both consider play with other people to be an expression of non-monogamy. Mm -hmm. um, something that always kind of makes me um, raise an eyebrow, let's say, is all the time I hear Spankos say, spanking is my sex. But then they say they're super monogamous while doing what they just described as their sex with a bunch of friends at a party. Like, I don't I don't really see how those two things fit together. Um, I prefer the phrase spanking occupies the place in my life that sex occupies in the lives of most people. Um, and since I do the activity that occupies the place that sex occupies in the lives of most people, I do think that's an expression of ethical non-monogamy. Um, but you know, I respect the fact that other people have different opinions, even though those opinions are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you know, I do think it's, um, important for us in our relationship to focus on not getting too possessive 
Um, yeah. Or at least from my end. Um, Daddy yeah. does an incredibly good job of making me feel valued. He doesn't really test that. Um, I've never really been, like, I think I'm capable of feeling possessive, but he has never pushed me into that corner. Um, he He's not, you know, up at midnight having long extended text conversations with his play partners. He's not, you know, going on road trips with his play partners without me. He's not... Um, you know, he's not inviting them into a space of emotional intimacy that would provoke my jealousy. Um, but I mean, this is, it's interesting to hear myself say all this because we actually have been sincerely polyamorous in the past where we both were in serious, romantic, loving relationships with other people at the time. And at the time I, I was not jealous um, because I think, because I, you know what, I think the reason I could handle our poly dynamic, um, and we may be poly again someday, I don't know. Um, but the reason I think I could imagine feeling, um, jealousy about your play partners, if you didn't, if you weren't so good at, at managing those relationships is I think the bottom line is I'm the kind of person who likes to know where I stand. Yeah. And when you were in a, when you had a girlfriend while you were also my dominant, I knew exactly where yeah. I stood. I knew that I was your submissive and that she was your girlfriend and you loved her and you cared about me. And that was fine because I knew what the deal was. Um, similarly today with your play partners, I know that you really care about them and that they're really close friends of yours and you love spanking them and you love spending time with them but you're not doing anything to make me question whether something more is going on. You're not making, you're not doing anything to make me question where I stand. And I think that's the bottom line. Being clear is, is really important because I don't want to, I wouldn't want to lead any of them on either. Like I want, I also, any, any, any play partners, I want them to know where they stand as well. You don't want to mess with their heads. Yeah, and yeah. our relationship now, I think the reason that we probably, why there's a good chance we don't do poly again, even though we continue doing ethical non-monogamy is the re our relationship where it is now you want a lot of attention you know you sure. want you want to know that you like your you know that you that i prioritize giving you attention which is totally fair and everyone i plays with knows that as well it's very clear that i play with them but like you know look after you like i you know if you're you know i'm always gonna take your calls or you know i'm always gonna be like you know I, i'm never gonna be worrying about them the way I'm worrying about you. I'm never going to be paying attention to them the way I, I pay attention to you. That's something that I that I give you and that you really value. You want that attention. Well, I think you're really good at setting boundaries. It's the, it's the boundaries. It's really important that it, like everyone knowing where they stand is really important. That's how you don't get into bad situations of people getting possessive or jealous or other people getting led on or thinking. It's 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 really you want everyone to know where they stand and that's. It's more fun that way. If everyone's clear, then you don't have to worry. If you know, we just play together, right? And I don't, you know, we don't, if I'm, if, if there's a play partner and I play with them, we have fun and we know that's what it is. And I don't give them, you know, I don't look after them. I don't daddy them in the way that I do you. You know, they're not expecting that. You know that, you know, you've still got all my attention and my focus. Like that's, that's how you, that's how you, I think that's how you have to do it. Well, I think another way to put it, and this goes back to what I said, um, in response to the first question about the list you keep of infractions on your phone, you're very, very good at follow through. If you say you're going to do something, you actually do it. If you say that I'm going to be punished for something, it actually happens. If you say you're going to call me at a certain time or you know show up at a certain time, you always do, you never drop the ball. And I appreciate that so freaking much. That's like a really rare quality actually. Well, I think you're... I, think, I drop the ball all the time. No, I think you're super good at it as well, actually. I think you're extremely good at it. I think that you're always yeah. like... Well, you know, because you always want my attention. So you're always telling me what's going on. <laughs> so you're always texting me. You're always telling me what's going on. If you're playing with someone else or anything, like, you can't... You can't have, like... You can't have a crush on someone without texting me immediately and telling me. Oh, that's true. You know? So, like, yeah. you're, you're great at it, which is great. Like, I, you know, I know exactly what's going on and how you feel and... Like, no, you're, you're a great and... He knows it, where he stands, even when where he stands is that he is my boyfriend who I love and I have a short-lived crush on someone else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that happens fairly regularly. No, you're a great and enthusiastic communicator. Okay, so the next question is, 
What would you tell people in the early stages of a Spanko Spanko relationship? I think we covered this a little bit already. Mm. Um, just like any relationship, Spanko or otherwise, the honeymoon phase doesn't last. It does not last. And that's okay. Honeymoon phase is really fun, but it's not sustainable. You don't have enough energy to keep that up for, you know, 20, 30 years. Like, it's okay that it doesn't stay as crazy intense as it is the first six months or the first year. No, I, I think the later times are better. Yeah. I, they, 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 they are. They're just different. Like, all well, they if not better, then equally good, just, just different. Um, but it is something good for people to know because I think that one of the, sometimes it can be a little tricky to transition. So I think it's easy to be in the honeymoon phase and easy to not be in the honeymoon phase, but the transition can be tricky. Well, sometimes the transition makes people panic. Yes, because you feel like it's slipping away, like, oh, we're not playing as much. Oh, we're not doing like, oh, is it that we don't like each other as much anymore? Yeah. The transition is tricky and people can really worry that like, oh no, is this like, is it that we're not as into each other anymore? Like it's that, so like, if you're prepared for it, if you understand that you're not going to be playing 10 times a day after a while. And I mean, maybe, maybe there are people out there who are playing 10 times a day, 10 years into a relationship. And if so, power to you. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, that is not our situation. No. I, yeah, what I wrote we, here- We're getting old and sleepy. We haven't got the energy for that. What I wrote here is um, I would tell people that the relationship does evolve and will evolve, and that's okay. Um, I wrote, for example, we don't use a punishment book anymore. Oh, it was so good, though. So <laughs> It was so good. I still have it, though, just as like a, a beautiful... A relic. A beautiful artifact. So in early in our dynamic, um, every time I was punished for something, I had to write like a page... It was only a little book, to be fair, but yeah. In this little book we had, it was super hot. She, I she, freaking loved it. Oh, it was so good. She would write, like, she would write what she did, and then I would sign that she'd got punished and write a description of how she was punished. Yeah. So we had for every single thing, we kept up for about, we had it for a while, six months or so. Yeah, it was sexy so hot i said i still have it because i read it every now and again yeah it's, it's still good, hot it's good stuff um, it's still hot but again like but we got bills to pay got we've to, got, I've got cats to feed i know we, i have work to do like you just can't and, keep up you have videos to film real life happens and and that's okay i would tell um people who are early in a relationship to enjoy the early months or years however long they last and also enjoy what comes after because I do think it's better. And the transition doesn't necessarily mean you have to panic. It doesn't necessarily no. mean something is slipping away. It could mean that something else is starting. No, I think that's really good advice. Don't worry when it does start to get less intense. It's not <laughs> that you're less into each other. The relationship is just evolving. So the next question on the list is what advice would we give to single Spankos? And I want to take this first mm -hmm. um, because this is hard to explain so i'm i want to find the right words i think it's really easy as people with a minority sexual identity to dismiss or belittle ourselves and dismiss or belittle the importance of our own sexualities all the time i hear spankos say things like well it's just spanking it's not the most important thing in the world or there's more important things than just spanking like there are so many other qualities in a person that that matter a lot but if you believe that this is our sexual orientation which not everyone does and that's absolutely fine but that is what i believe and if you believe that too i want you to imagine speaking these words to a friend with any other sexual orientation uh you wouldn't tell a gay man that it is unreasonable for him to want to date another gay man. You wouldn't tell a straight woman that it is unreasonable for her to want to date a straight man. Uh, so why do we tell ourselves that it is excessive or demanding or too much to want to date someone who also shares our sexual orientation? Um, so I would say m my advice for single spankos, honestly, it's, it's, really do try to find another spanking fetishist if you possibly can. It is worth trying to be in a relationship with someone who shares your sexual orientation. Um, but uh, along those lines, um, also don't, you know, flip out and marry the first spanko you meet. Because, Definitely don't do that. Uh, like I've said before, we are swimming in a small pond, but there are other fish in it. 
Yeah, absolutely. There are, I'm, I'm just going to follow straight on from what you said. There are very legitimate reasons why a Spanko might date a non-Spanko. There are a lot of really important things mm -hmm. to some people having children is really important, for example. Yeah. And if they meet someone and they think, oh, this is the person, perfect person to have children with, that's a really big deal. Yeah. I definitely think, though, it is good to understand that, like, playing with a non-Spanko will not be the same. It isn't the same as playing with someone with the same sexual orientation as you. And so I, I do implore people, if you get the opportunity to experience a disciplinary dynamic, for the disciplinary, disciplinary spankers out there, and I know there's a lot of us mm. are that way, I really think whether it's like, like us, where it's also your primary relationship as well, or even if it's not your primary relationship, just having the experience of a disciplinary dynamic, having a disciplinarian or being a disciplinarian, um, I think it's such an amazing experience because you really, until you've, until you've, until you've experienced it, it's, it's, it's so amazing being able to just play with someone who understands what you want to do and know, automatically knows all the right words and knows all the, and, and you get a bit more, there's something you get from a disciplinary dynamic. There are some things you get that you don't get from just like playing at parties. Playing at parties is awesome. But you can, you know, you can get deeper into that disciplinary type headspace when you have a long-standing dynamic with someone. Because obviously, you you know, you know that communication gets to a level. You know each other so well that you can sort of be more disciplinary. And it really is something to that really important. I think for Spankos to try and experience because there's nothing like it, and you don't really know what you're missing until you have it, and it's really worth experiencing. I agree. Okay, the next question I like a lot. It's, are you frightened it won't work out because of the smaller dating pool? And the answer is yes. yes like, is yes. I've pretty much accepted that it's this or nothing. Um, and not just because of the spanking thing, but also because I don't want children. He also doesn't want children. I do want to spend my life and all of my money feeding and neutering street cats. And he feels the same way. Um, I've got this very sort of um, nomadic lifestyle where I, I really love moving around a lot um, and he's game to do that with me. Um, and I've got stupid hobbies like walking from Mexico to Canada um, and he's yep. into that too. Um, so in, in just so many ways, I, I really, I think it's this or nothing. Yeah, I decided quite a long time ago that I only wanted to date Spankos. That's my decision, to, you know. Um, and I don't want children, something I'm very clear on. There are not, there are loads of female Spankos. There are not many people that don't want kids and are Spankos. Like, yeah, there are not many people. Definitely, we're aware of it. I would say if you find, and I hope this is okay to say, I would say if you find another Spanko, and you're like 95% compatible. If you're compatible in the important things, you know, you're the, you know, the, 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 the age works, you, whether or not you want kids is such a big thing. Do you both want kids? Do you both not want kids? Like the fundamental stuff, what kind of lifestyle do you want? Do you want to move around? Do you want to not move around? Like if you find someone in another Spanko and you're 95% compatible, put a ring on it. Like just, you know, and I understand that maybe for non-Spankos, 95% then keep looking, maybe find 97% or whatever. Like, yeah, it's a smaller pool. I would say if you find someone 95%, make it work. Okay, there's only one more question and it is probably going to be the title of this video. Is being with another spanking fetishist worth it? Yes, spanking mm. is great. <laughs> um, I was gonna jokingly say no, but no, no, no. Yes, it's um, it's absolutely worth it. There's little things that fill our lives that um, wouldn't be possible with someone who wasn't a Spanko. Um, I, if I find a funny startle while he's at work, I can send it to him yeah. right away. And I know that he won't be irritated by that. I know that he will appreciate it. And I know that he's at work probably, you know, searching the internet for startles too. Um, little things like, you know, when we're in bed and he's just waking up, he's groggy, and I can say, you know, touch my butt. <laughs> and he will, he's game. He like, he, in fact, he's excited about it. He's enthusiastic. Um, being a Spanko is, I think, more than just a sexual orientation. 
And it's certainly more than just a sexual activity. It's also a language and a culture and a history. And we share all of that. Um, he grew up on the other side of the world from where I grew up, but there are startles that we were both obsessing over when we were kids. There are websites that we were both lurking on. There are, um, you know, models that we have both admired for years. Um, and that's cool. It's cool to have that kind of connection. Um, I think it's like any other sort of cultural context. It's, um, if you're from the same country or from the same cultural background, you might have the same holidays in common. Um, if you're from the same religion, you might have the same practices and rituals in common. Being a Spanko is just like that. It's um, another culture that we share. Yeah, absolutely. Nailed it. Um, dating non-Spankos before, there were always a bit of low-level anxiety about whether or not they were satisfied. There's me thinking, do they want to have sex? They, that kind of thing. Love not having that. Or like, is he or she just doing this as a favor to me? Well, that too. But I used to be anxious about trying to make sure that I like had sex with them regularly and stuff. Because, you know, I don't, because I now realize that I don't care. No, it's super nice being with someone that I, I'm not ever, that I, I don't have any of that anxiety. You know, now I just have to worry about you being a brat, which is much better. <laughs> No, it's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely worth it. So thank you for watching this video and a big thank you to everyone who submitted questions. We really enjoyed uh, answering them. And I would love to hear about your stories in the comment section for this video. Have you ever been in a relationship with another spanking fetishist? Have you never had that experience? Um, what do you think? Do you, do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's worth shooting for? Do you think it's worth um, trying to incorporate into your relationships? Or are you um, more focused on other things? Please tell me in the comment section. And as always, thank you for stopping by. See you next time. Yeah. <laughs>